Barakim Habarim, welcome to Messianic Moment Ministries. I'm Stephen Brook. Hey, you know who you are. Today's the seventh day of September. Well, the other day someone was, re was referring to the Magen David, which people think Star of David, but it really means Shield of David, and asking if it was really a pagan image. Well, I looked it up, and you know what? Yes, it was once used in ancient Egyptian and Babylonian paganism. And it's also believed that, that Solomon really first used that six-sided star after he had been lured into worshiping false gods by the many non-Jewish wives that he took at the end of his reign. And not only that, but there's actually no relationship to this image and King David at all, either in, in the Bible or in history. So does that mean that everyone wearing one of these stars around their neck should destroy it? I mean, should Israel change their flag? It seems to me there are just so many people, people wanting to know more about God, Yeshua, and the Bible, who are just beginning to realize that many of the images, words, and holidays that we celebrate today have a history which may not be in accordance with the Bible. I'd like to voice my opinion on this and, and hope it makes some sense to you. Now, let's face it, paganism has existed since men first started to create religions. And it's composed of both religious and social activities, images, symbols, and such. It's ridiculous to think that any image or symbol we find in one culture or religion means absolutely the same thing for everyone everywhere. In fact, there are a number of examples where what we see in one culture might have a totally different meaning in another culture. Take the swastika. For example, now to the German people in the 1930s and 40s, it represented a new hope for a better future. However, today throughout the world, it symbolizes the very essence of fascism and bigotry. But did you know that to the Native Americans, some 3,000 years before the Nazis, that very same symbol represented creation expansion and a spiritual connection so you see one person's symbol of hatred is another person's symbol of love many at one time many centuries ago maybe the star of david might have been used in a pagan ritual yet today it represents something totally different and this sort of misdirected thinking is what really gets my goat There's so many christians gain just enough knowledge without understanding to be dangerous to themselves and others. Aren't those who accept Yeshua as the Messiah, who do teshuva, which means turn from sin, and ask God for forgiveness, well, aren't they born again? Aren't our old selves no more? What once was a sinful entity destined for damnation is now clean and holy. So when it comes to holidays or symbols that have been reborn, because they now mean something totally different than what they did in another time for another culture in a different religion? Why is it that we do not grant those things the same forgiveness and rebirth <laughs> that God has granted to us? Christmas and Easter, they're just rejected by so many Christians simply because they were once pagan holidays. But they weren't. The pagan holidays had a different name, celebrated a different God, whereas Christmas and Easter were created to celebrate the Messiah of the one and only true God. They have different names, different ceremonies, and represent different religions, so why are they considered to be the same thing? The answer is solely based on the fact that they both happen to fall on the same day of the year. You know, guilt by association is not guilt. It is coincidence. And to reject something that once was pagan, but now is of the one true God and his Messiah, well, it's a wrongful association. And why do we do this? What does it really show? How knowledgeable someone is? Does it show how holy someone is? Because now they reject something that happens to be similar to something else that was in a totally different culture, a totally different religion, and to a totally different people? Yeah, I, I think the smart thing is to recognize what something is today and not live in the past. If we do not accept what something symbolizes today, but only see what it was in the past, 
Well, then how can we expect to be forgiven of our sins? Does God only see what we were before we accepted Yeshua? Does God not accept our prayers because we used to be sinners? Doesn't Yeshua tell us if we do not forgive on earth, we will not be forgiven in heaven? It's Matthew 6, 14. Isn't accepting a holiday or an image or a symbol for what it means today the same as forgiving its past? Since it now, today, represents something holy instead of something pagan? God said the past is to be the past and the present is to be what we deal with. That's Ezekiel 18. That which used to represent something sin sinful but now represents something holy is now holy. What was, was, and what is, is. Who knows what will happen in the future? Hey, maybe during the reign of the Antichrist, what if the holy day of Yom Kippur will be redirected to the son of perdition, asking him for salvation? <laughs> will you still worship on that day? <laughs> I'll tell you, if that ever happens, God forbid, I'm telling you right now, I'll be eating three meals a day if that day of fasting is directed to anything other than Adonai. So, what do we have? We have two opinions. One, is something that we use in our worship of God today, many centuries ago, <clears throat> used to be something in a pagan religion, well, it should be totally rejected as still being pagan. Or, second opinion, is something that we use today in our worship of God, many centuries ago, used to be something in a pagan religion, we should forgive, ignore its past, because it is now a new creation. It's your choice. You can choose to celebrate whatever we know today to be dedicated to celebrating God and Messiah or to reject celebrations and images dedicated to God and His Messiah because once, long ago, to a different people in a different religion, they meant something else. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to tell God that I rejected celebrating the Messiah because well, that day the calendar once meant something else to a different people in a different time practicing a different religion. Well, thank you for being here. And please, subscribe to this ministry on my, on my website, subscribe button right here margin and somewhere one of these images here on YouTube. Click on that. Click the notifications, the bell, all that stuff. You know what to do. And share these messages, please, with, with everyone you know. And I also invite you to join my Facebook group. It's called Just God's Word. But please, you got to click that you agree to the rules or I can't allow you to post there. That's, that's just the rule. And if you like these messages, you will like the books I've written. You can get them. They're on my website. Or go right to Amazon. Look up my name, Stephen R. Brook, and you'll see my books. And remember that I always welcome your comments. I try to get to them as soon as I can. And that's it for this week. So, Lehi Trout, and let me wish you all an early Shabbat Shalom.